You're concerned about the impact of a rise on the federal budget. Why is that? Well, we're just borrowing too much money, Michael. Uh, we now have the highest debt uh, since, as a share of our GDP since World War II. Uh, and when you get into that kind of debt levels, uh, there's only so much you can continue to spend money on. I'm particularly concerned about increases in recurrent spending, that is like increases that commit us to spend year and year after year after year after, uh, because who knows uh, how the world's going to change in the next 10 years. We've been shocked in the last year. Uh, I actually su I supported an increase in the dole pre the coronavirus, but I'd always said when we get back to surplus, uh, we're a long way from that now. And I just think another $9 billion over the next four years is a, is a big concern. Now, I'm not going to stand in the way of this. I, mm. As I say, I've got sympathy for an increase in the dole, but I, I do think we need to start a conversation about where our debt is, where it's going, and how we're going to manage this. Do you have sympathy, though, for the many genuine unemployed people who would say that getting an extra $3.60 a day to support themselves and, in many cases, a family is simply nowhere near enough? Well, of course it's nowhere near enough. You know, it would be better to be... Obviously, you know, we'd love to be able to give people $10, $20 a day, but, you know, there's always a cost with those things. Uh, you've got to pay for it. Uh, and right now, how we pay for it is we borrow more money from largely overseas. About 60% of our long-term debt comes from foreign borrowers. Now, we've all seen how vulnerable a position we've been put in with our trade dependence on China in the last year. I don't think we want our government... Uh, accounts to be uh, vulnerable on one country or international bond markets because they can change very, very quickly. Uh, uh, interest rates are at record lows right now. That's unlikely to stay there. Uh, and so when this debt gets rolled over, we typically borrow for about 10 years. And in 10 years' time, we'll have to, if we don't have the money to pay it back, we've got to borrow again to pay back the debt we borrowed. If interest rates are higher, that means we'll be able to afford a lot less things, a lot less hospitals, a lot less schools, mm. a lot less public services. So we've got, to, we've got to be serious here about that we just can't keep spending money. We've, we've spent a lot of money uh, to fight the coronavirus and I've supported that. Uh, that's been the right approach, but it has meant now that we're going to be able to buy less, a fewer nice things. OK, another aspect of, of this announcement uh, relates to the, uh, the employer hotline set up by the government where employers can effectively dob in job seekers who, uh, if they're offered a job by that employer, don't take it. Many critics, including Peter Strong, uh, Matt Canavan from the Council of Small Business Australia, he says most employers are actually compassionate towards the jobless. Uh, Peter goes on to say, you know a bludger when you see one and the reality is that most people are not dull bludgers. Aren't we marking down our fellow Australians here by setting up this hotline? Well, the first point to make is uh, I don't believe anyone will be forced to uh, use the hotline. They don't have to call up uh, if they don't want to. Uh, and the second point to make is, well, sorry, there are people out there who uh, are bludging on the dole. Uh, I don't mind talk, saying frankly. I mean, there are lots of people, and we've seen that in the last uh, year, that people taking job keeper and job seeker and not taking work. Now, we can't just keep doing that. We can't just keep paying people to sit on the couch and play the Xbox. Uh, but don't you, uh, but don't you worry about employers will we'll, 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 uh, we'll, uh, use this for ulterior motives, say offering a job, uh, to, to, but uh, to, to capitalise on the vulnerable position many unemployed people are in who may not, for valid reasons, want to accept the job being offered? What, what, what incentive would an employer have to do that? What do they get out of it? Unless they're, unless they're just completely malicious... Uh, and, and, yeah, OK, there's probably some people mm. like that in this world, but I, I don't think, as I agree with Peter, uh, the vast majority, almost all, I'm sure, don't have mal any malice about it. But I know many businesses are pretty frustrated, mate. They put their own livelihoods on the line, mortgage their own homes, trying to, trying to uh, uh, keep their businesses afloat. And right now, the biggest problem for most small businesses is they can't get people to work. Uh, and yet there are, we do have quite high unemployment still, a bit higher than average, and they can't get people to work. Uh, so, because people are happy to take often the job keeper or job seeker elevated payments we've seen. So, mm. you know, that's not sustainable. Uh, we cannot stay locked down, out of a job, on the couch forever. Uh, eventually we'll go bankrupt if we do that. OK, now to another issue. Uh, your colleague and good mate Barnaby Joyce was one of the first to congratulate Craig Kelly after he split so dramatically from the Liberals yesterday. Are you trying to sign him up to the Nats? Well, I'd always have to love to have more people in the party, Michael, and that's because this game is ruthless. It's all about the numbers, and I'd love to see the interests and uh, issues that we push the Nationals Party go further with more numbers. Uh, look, it's a matter for Craig. I love Craig. He's a good bloke, good mate. 
Um, but uh, so firstly, the ball's in his court, and then secondly, obviously, it'll be a matter for my Nationals Party's mm. colleagues to discuss. But look, uh, you know, it was disappointing to see him leave the Liberal Party in the joint coalition party room yesterday. I think he'd be more effective in the tent than outside, but that's his call. Uh, and if there's a way of getting him back into the tent, even if that's with a different party and the Nationals Party in the coalition, I think that would be better for us all. OK, speaking of numbers, do you support your leader, Michael McCormack? Well, of course I support uh, the leader, uh, but I've said consistently over the last year I'd like to see the Nationals Party take a more assertive and uh, uh, aggressive approach on issues. Mm -hmm. I think it's very important uh, that we defend the interests of the productive classes of this country. And he's not, good, uh, he's to... not doing a good enough job in your view well, on as that I said, front? I, I've consistently said I'd like to see us take a more assertive role uh, uh, on these issues. Uh, I don't think we should be heading down this net, net giving any credence to this net zero emissions path because that would just shut down large sections of rural Australia. It costs thousands of people their jobs in the agricultural and mining and manufacturing industries. And they're the, they're the lifeblood of our, our towns. Uh, you don't get, you, don't, you know, you won't have uh, towns like Moranborough if you don't have a mining industry. OK. Uh, we won't would, have... would, would Barnaby Joyce do a better job if he was to stick his hand up for leader again? Well, that's not... He's not he hasn't done that. But if he did, uh, if he did that, see, would you support him? I, I'd like to see... I'd like to see... Uh, Michael uh, step up to the plate and, and take up these issues. That's what I'd like to see. Uh, I don't think you know, changing the captain of the ship is the best thing. It's best to put the ship in the right direction. OK, Matt Canavan, we'll leave it there. Thanks for joining us this morning. Thanks, Michael. Have a good day, mate.